Howdy y'all, I'm standing in the middle of what will be the cabin. I'm doing this floor differently than what I did on the cabin that I built for myself or that I'm actually building, it's not completed. On that particular cabin, I went and cut post oak trees and flattened the tops and made my floor joist out of round oak logs. But here I'll be using rough sawn lumber that we got from the sawmill. We've had some pretty hot weather, which has helped it to dry. And that's what I'll be doing. This will actually be kind of a basic floor system, uh, the style, the way that I do it. What I've done on the tops of these piers is to cut some metal and cap the treated lumber. This is a tube of 12, and I had to add on a little bit more, about three quarters of an inch to make it a full uh, 12 inches wide, which is what the pier size is, 12 by 12. And I've got my string up. This is the outside of the building. And I measured from the string back six inches, which is the actual inside face of the log, which will always be my control from the inside of the building. And then I came another three eighths of an inch. Now where my finger is, is where the floor framing will start. I'm leaving myself three eighths of an inch between the floor and the actual inside face of the log, which will allow any moisture or rain to go on through and not be trapped there. There's a line here. That's the inside face of D wall and B wall will also be the same. And it's three eighths of an inch back from the end of this first two by 10 that I've put down here for the beam that'll carry the weight of the floor. Since I am using rough sawn two by tens that we got from the mill, they are not exactly 10 inches. Uh, some of them are a little bit over and some are just a little bit less. And so I'm dealing with that and working with it. The ones that are a little bit over, like you can see here, I had to notch that out. I just took my combination square and mark that. I set it on 10 inches and just mark where I need to trim a little bit off the bottom of that. And that'll keep all the tops of the joist even. I set the top of the girder that's going down the middle of the building. The joist will cross that and be supported by that in the middle. So that'll cut our span down to where we're going to have a really strong floor. I've got a four four post underneath it setting on pad every four feet. The first floor joist will set in between these two tube of tents that are going down the length of the cabin. And I'll get this one in, and then I'll cut another long tube of tin that'll come up to that. I'll show you that when I get that cut and ready to set in there. I'm anchored this first board of the beam down to the top of the piers through the metal and into the treated tube of 12 with a three inch torque screw. And since I have the duct tape there on my line, I can go right to that duct tape, just push it right over to it. I'm on my layout line here at the edge of the duct tape, which is on the line that I made. And I've got the end of the, of the tube of tin at the edge of the duct tape. So this is established where it needs to be. I had to hold this one up just a little bit because it's just a little bit less than uh, 10 inches. So I'll go ahead and anchor it into my, this board here and uh, I can put some shims underneath that to carry the weight. Okay, I'll go to the other end now. I have the inside piece of the beam put in and it's screwed to the outside piece and I cut that to go between the outside joist and uh, I screwed it into the end of it also. Put these screws about every 16 inches, three of them, down the face of the tube of tin. And I've already got my layout. I'm doing a 16 inch center. I'm going to put a ledger down here on the bottom and I'm going to hold the top of it down uh, seven inches from the top edge 
and I just set my combination square at seven inches and I'm just going down through there and just scribing a mark and that will be the, the top side of the ledger. I'll go all the way down the length of that and uh, make that mark and I'll rip a three inch piece and screw it on down here at the bottom and then the joist will be notched out over that ledger and it will give it some extra support otherwise I would just be dependent on the nails in the ends of the joist into this beam but with that sitting on the ledger it makes it stronger. Now this is kind of how I do a layout. There's the center of 16 inches and I came back three quarters of an inch and made a mark and on every mark I just set it back three quarters of an inch all the way down through there. Now normally your uh, your framing joist would be an inch and a half from here to here uh, but now these are different thicknesses. You can see this this uh, inside piece is a full two inches and the outside is about an inch and five eighths so you just have to work from one side and just make sure that one side is on the, the actual layout and the extra thickness will be over here but since i do have the layout i can keep them all running the 16 inch center from from that mark there which would be about three quarters both of the ledgers are on now this is on d-wall and you can see I didn't spare the screws. I used the three and a half inch torque screws to put this on. This is on a wall. I have a uh, floor joist on my saw horses. Actually, this is my last joist to cut. And I wanted to show you how I fixed the bottom side of that to set over the ledger. I've got this cut to length. Really, before I put my notch on the bottom, I want to look at this joist and see if it's got a crown in it and I've, I'll mark the top side of it if it's got a crown you know where it's uh, got a hump in it I want that on the top side so I've already checked this and I'm going to mark that real good on the top side I still have my combination square set on seven inches which is what I was using to uh, mark for the ledger that I put on the beams I'm going to mark from the top down I'm putting my square on the top there's my black mark and I'm going to make a little mark here a little line across there now I know the thickness of the ledgers are about an inch and 13 16 in the width I'm going to make this just a little bitty bit more than an inch and 13 then I'll mark that now this will be what cuts out of the bottom side and the joist will actually be able to set on the ledger right here. I'll go ahead and get both ends of it. Get them marked. Now I'll take my handsaw and I'll finish that cut. And I can take my chisel and just clean all that up. I've started anchoring in the uh, floor joist into the beam. And I'm also putting uh, a row of blocks in between the joist down through here. I'm using my framing gun to shoot these blocks in and to nail these all together but I am using some uh, three and a half inch torque screws and I'll show you where I'm using them right there is a three and a half inch torque screw that's actually going down into the ledger that I put on but the block itself I'm nailing on and into the joist with the, the power nails speeds up the process a little bit after I get one of the joist in there from the I butt my tape against that joist and I come over Maybe a little difficult to see, but that is my layout. That will be this side of the joist. Now these joists are different thicknesses, so I'm just going to this side, this side of it right here, and that's the length that I'm cutting my block, and I set it in there up against the joist that's already nailed down. 
and then I can bring this joist over against that. Now if you buy your floor joist at the lumber yard, they're going to be an inch and a half in the width of them or in the thickness of them. But since these are, are different thicknesses, I cannot use joist hangers because they won't fit these. Some of these are up to two inches thick. And so a joist hanger really wouldn't work well. And that's one of the reasons that I have put the ledger on and I can set the joist on top of that with the notch out. That fit in rather nicely. The end of this girder is out from this first joist and that will be to carry the weight of the middle of uh, this is actually D, uh, D wall. The half log will set on top of that. All the weight in the center of the logs in D wall will be transferred down to the ground, sitting on the girder and the post and the pad. running a row of block down the center right over the girder and I'm running these on a well actually I snapped a blue chalk line right here and I'm trying to keep them running straight some people will uh, put one block on one side of the line and the next block they may set over here on this side of the line and that that's fine I'm ready now to start putting the uh, subfloor down I'm using uh, a construction adhesive on top of the joist I've got the first sheet here ready to go using the two and a half inch torque screws to, to screw it down. I'm putting a, a block underneath the edge of the uh, plywood on this front edge here and I'm screwing down to this and then when I put the other sheet on I'll be able to screw into this same block and that will be kind of like using a tongue and groove a plywood when I roll the hoist around on the floor I don't want to come across these edges without something underneath it to support it so this will lock uh, the two sheets together and I'll feel safer with the hoist going across that edge <music> 